So the PAXLAC stands for Pain Assessment Checklist for seniors with limited ability to communicate. And the initial development uh, was in collaboration with my master's student at the time, Shannon Fuchs Lassell. And for that study, uh, we interviewed nurses to start. And uh, we asked them, what are the pain behaviors that they typically rely on to identify pain in, in uh, people with limited ability to communicate? So they gave us a very long list of behaviors, which we eventually filtered down after eliminating overlap uh, into, into a, a checklist. And then we validated the checklist by looking at how it behaves during painful versus non-painful situations. I'm the resident care coordinator on fourth floor, Santa Maria. I'm in charge of the whole floor. I'm in charge with the residents, the staff, and the families as well. So when I moved in Saskatchewan at Santa Maria, that's when I found they're using a pack slack too, yes. And this tool is designed to only for people who are elderly with dementia. People with severe dementia, when they have an unmanaged or undermanaged pain, they display um, responsive, challenging behaviors that tend to be misattributed to psychiatric causes. And when that happens, um, clinicians will sometimes administer psychotropic rather than analgesic medication. And these psychotropic medications hasten death. In other words, people are at greater risk of death over the, last, the next year if, if they're taking a psychotropic medication. So the minimum requirement for assessing pain in long-term care in the overwhelming majority of Canadian provinces is once every three months. So even if you're using the Paxlac every three months, and most often they wouldn't use it, that's a long period of time where you leave people um, who have difficulty telling you they're in pain without an assessment. Now, good clinicians would, of course, remain attuned to the possibility of pain and, and, and they would assess pain as needed and, and more frequently. But the reality is that the, they're only mandated to assess pain every three months. Even without extra resources, more frequent pain assessment is possible. I mean, the first obvious one is for residents. It impacts them in that the PAXLAC is a nice tool to help staff think about, is this resident experiencing pain? And if so, let's act accordingly and, and manage the pain. Is the pain being well managed? Um, so it impacts the resident just in terms of their overall quality of life. Nobody wants to be in pain. Um, in terms of the staff, it impacts them in a couple of ways, really. One is it's a nice tool for them to kind of w walk through different pieces of pain and think about um, might there be something going on here, particularly with residents who can't say, oh, I have a headache or, you know, my arm is hurting. Um, but the second way that I see that it helps staff is it keeps pain on their radar. So for example, you're here today talking about the pack slack with Esther. It raises it in her awareness. So she's thinking a bit more. Um, we saw when Thomas, uh, in a previous study that he was doing on one of our units, the RCC and the team were using different apps for Thomas. And you could see people's awareness of pain and the importance of pain and thinking about it. It just increases it. It helps keep it on your radar. There's so much going on in a day, that little things to cue you up, it's useful. We tried for a long time to find better ways of recognizing pain in people with severe dementia who have difficulty telling us that they're in pain. And our first few attempts to accomplish that involved uh, methods in the scientific laboratory. 
But these methods were very cumbersome and potentially unusable in, in busy clinical settings. So the Paxlac represented an attempt to um, create something that frontline staff can use day to day that's not time consuming and that is valid. I think one thing um, that I would add is that um, what I like about Thomas is he's he's an academic researcher, but his research is having real world potential and impact. Um, so bench research is important, but so too is applied research and, and helping seniors, particularly seniors with dementia is value add.